Hi, I'm Gabe. And I'm Hayden. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript looks into proposed changes in the NHS AP testing policy, battles the fencing team, and learns what the robotic team has been up to this season. The House Oversight Committee has begun an investigation into the actions of former White House Staff Secretary Rob Porter. Last week, Porter resigned after his two ex-wives announced claims of abuse. It has been reported that it was widely known in the White House that Porter's lack of security clearance was due, in part, to these claims. The White House has claimed it was unaware of the extent of the allegations, but FBI Director Christopher Wray has contradicted that claim. It was also uncovered this week that at least 100 White House staffers did not have full security clearance by November 2017, although it is unclear why. In a nationally televised speech on Wednesday, South African President Jacob Zuma announced his resignation after a nine-year tenure. This comes after the African Leadership Council called for Zuma's resignation on Monday, after reports that Zuma's family and friends benefited financially from his presidency. South African Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa was sworn in on Thursday. Ramaphosa made his name in South African politics, in working closely with Nelson Mandela, and in leading unions. On Wednesday, Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut condemned an action and called for gun control reform on the Senate floor after a mass shooting at a Florida high school, where 17 people were killed. In a televised speech on Thursday, President Trump said that he would visit Parkland, Florida, and urged communities to take notice when people are struggling with mental health issues. This comes after President Trump's 2019 budget proposes a 22.5% cut to Medicaid, which funds about 25% of all mental health spending. The president's address contained no mention of gun control, and his only action on the issue was last February, when he undid an Obama-era regulation that placed restrictions on purchasing guns for people with mental illnesses. Hi, I'm Fleur Castillo, and this is Tell It Like It Is. At Northampton High School, the College Board's Advanced Placement Program of courses allows the students to take rigorous and challenging college-level classes. Each AP class has a corresponding test at the end of the semester, which high school students are required to take in order to earn credit for the course. However, each exam comes with a fee approximately $93 per test. On Thursday, February 8th, the Student Union filed a report to the school committee addressing concerns about AP testing in the high school, arguing that every student should be able to choose whether or not to take the advanced placement test. I sat down with Hazel Ethier to discuss in more depth what motivated this report and what the student union hopes to get out of it. We have AP classes at Northampton High School um, and basically the idea is if you take an AP class you're required to take the accompanying AP test. It recently came to our attention as student union um, that this um, kind of policy surrounding AP testing at Northampton High School uh, isn't necessarily fair economically. We believe that it's really up to the students uh, whether or not this is, if it makes sense for them to take the AP test because it can add up to a lot of money. We did a survey of students at Northampton High School, schools in our surrounding area, AP teachers, and uh, we also looked at colleges, um, the AP credit that a lot of colleges that Northampton High School students go to and we found that most of the colleges uh, either capped the uh, number of APs um, they would accept from students or um, said that they wouldn't they would only take scores of you know five or four and considering three is an acceptable score on the AP exam it's considered passing by the college board um, that's pretty high and kind of hard to get. We also saw that um, a lot of them limited the subjects that they wouldn't take AP credit from. So we did that research, we shared it with the school committee, uh, we shared it with department chairs at Northampton High School. Uh, and moving forward, I mean, our main goal is just, you know, to get the word out there and to uh, kind of open up uh, channels for discussion around this issue. Um, and hopefully in the future, we'll be able to see a change in the policy at Northampton High School. Some people in school believe that the test should be required in order to show the student's potential in the course. I sat down with Sue Crego to discuss the various perspectives on the issue. I do share the concern that if students can't afford the test, um, that we have a problem. Any student who's on free and reduced lunch uh, can, get it, can take the test at no cost at all. Now that I heard that information, I feel that 
you know, if that's the case, then I think they should take the test. If the argument is about money, if kids pay 93 or $95 for an exam, if they had to pay the full amount, but they end up getting credit in college for the course, they save possibly thousands of dollars in the long run. The student union will continue working on spreading the word and are hoping to soon be able to change the policy of mandatory AP testing in Northampton High School. I'm Fleur Castillo and this was Tell It Like It Is. Hi, I'm Lulu. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Fencing, a sport you might be familiar with if you watch the iCarly episode where Spencer gets Freddie involved in fencing, is a big deal here for some kids at NHS. The fencing team here at NHS is not considered an MIAA sport and is treated as a club despite the fact that fencing is an Olympic and college sport. Fencers at NHS have to travel to different towns for practices and struggle with receiving a large crowd for their competitions. To get a better understanding of the history of fencing, I sat down with senior captains Joe Cerisi and Casey Edmonds Estes to learn more about the sport in general. There are three weapons in fencing. There's foil, epee, and saber. The first weapon to originate was epee. Epee are the swords you would use if you wanted to duel somebody. Foil is the training weapon, so it's the, it, it's the first one that they made a sport out of. Yeah. Um, it translates to flower in French because they had little, the, the tips of foils originally were flower shaped. Saber's the newest one. They still, funnily enough, don't have all the rules quite hammered out, so they keep on making tweaks year to year, which keeps on throwing our team off. Fencing is a, is a lot about footwork. It's not as much actually moving your sword around, it's a lot of moving with your feet in distance. Um, so we'll, like, first half hour, 45 minutes, we're just doing warm up, we'll do push up, sit ups, and then uh, footwork, then we each get into our individual weapons, um, and we'll do some training bouts. I also asked senior Riley Kidd to teach me how to fence and sat down with her to discuss her experiences being one of only three girls on the fencing team. It's been really nice, but at the same time it's been kind of weird because last year we had a lot more girls, and, but they were mostly seniors. And this year, since we're so small, it's been it's been nice because I've gotten closer to them and I've gotten to know them better. But at the same time, it's been kind of a drawback because we've had only three girls on the team this year. We weren't allowed to do states because we didn't meet the full criteria. So that was pretty disappointing and I was a little upset to not do states in my senior year. The fencing team practices every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 4 to 6 in East Hampton and is always looking for new members. They will also have a USFA fencing competition sometime in the near future. The girls basketball team has a home game tonight against West Springfield at 7. I also would like to congratulate the boys track team for another state championship. Finally, I would like to give a birthday shout out to my dad. Happy birthday, dad. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Lulu Kesson. Hi, I'm Johnny Ellis Murphy, and welcome to Tech Bits. This week, I checked in with the DevilBots, Northampton High School's robotics team. Robotics is a sport based around a new challenge revealed every January. For the six weeks after, students have to design, prototype, and build a robot from scratch. I interviewed freshman robotics members Eli Marlin and Emma Fallon to discuss the game and the workings of the robot this year. So we first learned about the challenge in January, um, early January, and the challenge is to build a robot that um, can place cubes on a um, a switch or a scale, which are different uh, mechanisms on a field that we will be playing with the robot on. You have these cubes you have to pick up, and they're scattered throughout the field, and there are three places you can put them. Uh, your team has a switch, uh, the other team has a switch, and then there's a scale, which is five feet off the ground, and you have to try and take control of it by weighting it more toward your side than the opponent's side. So the robot is like a guillotine-shaped um, 
movie thing with six wheels and it has like an elevator mechanism that uh, lifts up uh, this kind of arm. The robot has three main parts as far as I'm aware of. The elevator, the drivetrain, and then the electronics board. The elevator is probably the most unique from this year. Specifically, it's an elevator that goes up to, I believe, six feet tall. The drivetrain it has six wheels, two of which are connected to a dual motor system. I joined the robotics team because I was on a first LEGO League team last year. I joined the robotics team because before this, I had had a robotics team in the league below this, which is a much smaller scale. The build season ends on bag day, February 20th, when every team across the country ceases building and locks the robot in a big plastic bag until competition. The Devilbots first competition will be March 9th in Rhode Island. There, teams from all over New England will face off in teams of three to vie for positions in regionals. The Devilbots are hoping to go to regionals for the first time in six years. Good luck to the Devilbots, and I'm Jonah Eels Murphy. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. If you want to be a guest anchor on the transcript, you can sign up outside room G16. Don't forget to head over to the nhstechnology.org to check out this week's awesome online extras. And don't forget to watch Incredibles 2 coming out June 15th. I hope that people see maybe Ethan and his family as, as kind of welcoming and fun and interesting as char and as charismatic as I've been able to see them. I moved out there with a grand and um, one uh, suitcase and in half of the suitcase was an Xbox 360. <laughs>